ready to rock and roll. Yeah, buddy. What's, up, man? what's going on, guys? Hey, what's up, Warriors? Professor That's Eric. It. Professor Joe, right over here, man. What's going on? Uh, yeah, I saw a video the other day. It was guillotine defense. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty good, better than most of the stuff I've seen out there. But they got to basically the transition point. And just mess it all up. Well, I don't say that. But the individual was like, yeah, there's not much else you can do after this. And you're going to get choked. And uh, it's just a common Gracie Jiu Jitsu yeah, condition. Yeah. It's in the self defense curriculum yeah. from Helio's book, going way, way, way back to the early days. So it's kind of a standard that you should yeah. have. But a lot of people have trouble, it seems like, defending the guillotine on the feet or the ground. It's funny because, like, I was, uh, I was thinking about this right before this, too, was because uh, uh, you see guys on YouTube, like, Dean Lister's a really good uh, example of this. No, I'm not saying this in a negative way at all, but he's like, this is my self defense curriculum, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, you look at it and you're like, Oh, he's a great jiu-jitsu black belt because yeah. what he's doing he's is the curriculum. Really correct. Is yeah. the curriculum? You're like, oh, he's under Fabio Santos, who's but yeah. like, so it's it's really even in self-defense terms, you're talking about positions that are some of them are 100 years old, right? But they still work if you do them correctly. Right. How old is the wheel? Yeah, that's that's it's pretty old, but we haven't gone like I'm not asking for an, an yeah. answer. Might be an answer would be cool if there's an engineer out there, but <laughs> give us something better than the wheel, right? So yeah, you don't have to reinvent things. And uh, the guy I watched, he was ninety percent there, but unfortunately, like sometimes that last ten yeah, percent on the street, most important part. Yeah, that's what's gonna make a difference between whether you go home unconscious or not. Yep. And so uh, we'll look at a couple things. Uh, Professor Eric has some really good ways on how to create leverage on the shoulder. Yeah. But as the smaller person, I just want to prove that I cannot be choked. Oh, okay? for sure. So the first couple things, and we're just going to do without any setup. We're only going to do standing today. I think we've done a video on the ground. But if Probably. not, we'll go back. Very and we'll, similar. We'll look. So uh, let's, let's go this way. We're going to go right-handed. So when he goes to choke, one thing I want to think about doing is pinning my ear to his body. And even if I have no hands up at, at all, can you finish the choke? Nope. It's very difficult. See, my knee is getting depth between his leg. So ideally, I would try to grab and monitor the far arm before he even gets here and cut it off with my body. So now there's no space for him to reach through. And I'm kind of twisting his hand to create sort of a wrist lock. So there's a ton of leverage here. So most people want to take their hand off. Yep and it immediately gives you the side or the back position. So if you're ahead of it, it's relatively easy, but what happens, especially in a street fight, you see people do what we call it in school, the bum rush. Yep. I don't know if that's fully correct, but it'd be like that's this, right, yep. boom, yeah, like that. So you can't put your head down because there's just gonna be a gap between your ear and your shoulder, mm -hmm. right? So I remember, uh, the first time the UFC came to Portland, Oregon, actually was a, a minor league. It was the IFL. Yeah, yeah, it was right, the first yeah. MMA contest we had in the Portland area, which is where we're at here in the Northwest. And out of 15 fights on the card. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Dude, guilty. Yeah, I think it was like 10. I'm not really trying to exaggerate. Yeah. Let's say it was eight, right? Half yeah. the card, we started making bets in the middle where it was like, you think this is going to be a guillotine? Yeah. And what everybody was coming in with this, yeah. and there is another old setup. I might throw out at you guys if we do it, but he grabs my head. <laughs> you see people do this, and, push and they, out. yeah, and they try to go like that. And why does that work? Because the guy is not doing the guilty choke correctly. What? Yep. What? Yeah, most people lift Pull up. They lift up. So what's a proper guilty choke? Move the elbow. Yeah, see, do it. Turn, turn this way, dude. So check him out. Do it again. See this triangle in here? There's daylight. But when he moves the elbow in, the space is closing. And then it's a proper blood choke mm -hmm. too, right? Not on the windpipe yeah. where you're just lifting up, right? That's why, like, if I'm in a street fight with Eric here, it's and I hard. lift up, yeah. he can just pull out. Now my hands are right here. And it's being the shorter person, very tough to, to very tough to, to get enough leverage. Get enough leverage. Yeah. So you, so you want to have this angle. I think about bringing my knuckle to my other shoulder. I like lift all the way up. Sometimes there's a wrestling modified one. Mm -hmm. You see that grip grab this that way. Grab it for him. Who's it? Matt Hughes used to always do that. Yeah, Matt, yeah. Matt Hughes. Wrap it and then push from the underside. That works great. You can go this way too, though. And as long as you get that closed mm -hmm. door there. All right, so let's look at what happens when shit hits the fan. I miss my opportunity. My head is low and he grabs. 
Okay, so Just again, camera angle, sorry. So when he grabs, so one, I, I do want to intercept the, the grip. And as soon as this happens, if I'm moderately tall enough, I'm going to throw my arm over his shoulder and weight this shoulder with my toes. Yep. So now, if he tries to bring his there's arm no, in, go ahead, dude, show. it's going to be yeah. fun. Okay, go ahead, pick me up. Yeah, see, there's no way. Because I'm attached to him, I don't know how long you can maintain that for. Yep. Well, go ahead. Not a lot. Yeah, see, there's there's no impingement to my airway, to the artery. There's. Do you feel you can choke me there? Mm -hmm. Eric is choking a lot of people. He's choking <laughs> so have you, so have you. Right? So yeah. it works if you get the position right. Now, being shorter, you could do one other thing. It's not my favorite, um, but if you do it quickly and you get a good angle, it works well. And then we'll talk about how to get out of this position all again. So when he wraps, now what I'm going to do is intercept, and I'm going to go over his elbow, and I'm going to look for the back, and I'm going to tilt this way. So now I've just broken his angle. He, he can muscle out of this. He can let go and grab my lat, yeah, right? But the position now has changed. changed, right? Okay, so now how do we finish it? We're going to step around the leg is option number one. This way? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, Let's try to figure out the best yeah. angle. So you. see, my right leg is in the middle because I was trying to get to the back, yeah. right? Okay, so now I have this going on, and when I weight the shoulder and tilt, I'm going to take my right leg, and I'm going to go over his thigh to a basic, like, T position here. And now I'm just going to buckle the leg and go with my partner. And he might keep the headlock. Okay, so if I go over the ground, it's not going to be a good day. So I want to protect my neck, I put my chin in his ribs, and I back up. So now, again, he can choke as hard as he wants. That's it. Basically... My beard protects me by <laughs> having a buffer between the rib cage. Yeah, it's just the angle. Yep. You know, and a lot of people in self-defense, we see that knuckleheads are greedy. They, they hold the head. Yeah, they think, man, I have something here, so I'm just gonna hold on for dear life. But there's not really a good submission advantage there. No. Nah. And most of the time, if you're training, people are gonna go, uh, oh, yep. this sucks, and they're gonna let go. Right? Once they feel like, oh, there's no way I can choke this guy. Yeah. It's just not happening. Anything else you want to add? You want to do but, the yeah, Street Fighter flip? There's a couple different ideas, too. There's like one, like, if he gets here, like, we get to, to this ground right here. I can uh, do the same exact idea. Like, so I even think we can think about this, because I, I, I always think of it's an advantage. If I can, I can stop the choke, but I can also start working on his shoulder right away. Oh, yeah. So when I come here, see how what? When I get down, I'm gonna let him get down here. So if he keeps this, I want to have this. I can have the same exact idea. This also allows me to start putting a lot of pressure. See, it's almost like a core. And I'm very, very gentle. I'm about ready to but when I come over, huh. see, I get your shoulder. Yeah, you got right away. Right and you got the arm. That arm trying to, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, you can do it. And what he said is 100% right too. But if someone holds, if I enter in this this arm underneath. It's a choke on the opposite way. It's going to get called the Von Flute choke. Yeah. And it, and it starts really working. It's a shoulder pressure, too. Yeah. And you can really, really and that's why, that's why, like, I, when I feel like, because he's, do, when he's doing that, when he puts that pressure on me, I feel like, man, I've got to drop that grip when he tries, when yeah, he does, right. I'm like, my shoulders are going to get hurt. Yeah. If I, if, if some, if there's too many moving pieces right there and we're hitting the ground. Yeah. Like, man, and my shoulders are going to Yeah, if you're so. training, don't hold on for dear life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to be cooperative. Yeah, for sure. And that's a lot of times, like, we're not, like, it's good sometimes even just to, like, help your partner down in that situation so yeah. they can continue to hold. Like, I would, like, even I, I knew he wanted me to, I was like, I'm not going to hold on. Oh, yeah, maybe it was tight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I mean, even when he did, when, yeah, yeah, when he did, I'm like, like, geez, my sh I have to, because my, yeah. my shoulder mobility, it's, it's going to be a problem. All about problem. that looking up. And yeah. Changing really, the really. angle of the hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those moves where when you don't know how to address it, yep. it's like kind of terrifying. Mm -hmm. But once you get over that and you have good mechanics behind it, you're like completely confident yeah. to be there. You're like, oh, you're gonna do the guillotine? Like, okay, this is gonna work out great. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know why, it's one of those moves where you look out there and like, what is the possible defenses? Very few And you don't do see like yeah. a genuine article. We got this from uh, Master Paper Sour. And, it's, and the funny thing is it's like, it's so readily available, the answer like, it's just like, yeah. do you train with someone that's uh, that that has understand what they're talking about, or 
don't you? You know what yeah. I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just kind of the difference between like a sports jiu-jitsu context and a self-defense, like like a self-defense context or a self-defense gym versus a sports jiu-jitsu gym. Like, cause we have to, we have to take these into these sort of situations and account count. Cause like everybody's gonna, anybody that's seen any sort of UFC is either gonna try to grab your head or if, they're, if they have it, they're going to, you know? So yeah, it's super sure. common. It's, yep. There's not a lot of grappling moves. Like people watch Lethal Weapon 4, but they're not pulling out triangle chokes by accident. In the yeah, street. yeah. But a guillotine is easy to replicate. Just yeah. like a, a haymaker. Poor Gary Busey. I think he was the one that got Is he the one who got triangle Yeah, yeah. yeah. Poor Gary Busey. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. He got, he's recovered. Yep, that's right. He's been right. in Mel Gibson's crotch, is what he's been. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe go what was it exactly the same, man? <laughs> what, uh, anything else we're going to add? I think we've covered it. Pretty much. I mean, and it's just like, I think like, you know, there's a lot of different ways. Like sometimes people will step out, but as long as you have shoulder pressure, oh, you're yeah. in deep trouble. We, we could do the step out. We'll continue this if people are interested in. We'll do the step out. I call it the Street Fighter 2 flip. Yeah. Because you yeah. remember, uh, Ken, the guys who shot fireballs, Ken and Ryu? Yeah. They would do a backwards Oh, flip. that's right. They sure would. Yeah, and it's that's really it right. is that's the when they hang on and you can't lift and you can't get around the corner mm -hmm. or you're going around the corner your pressure's weak and the guy moves the leg. The Street Fighter Two. What do you like do that. now? You do the Street Fighter Two flip. I like that. That's but uh, I never, I never thought I, of it that way. But it's I'm exactly just gonna what it is. dangle that carrot. Yeah. And then we'll come back with it. So uh, I mentioned it yesterday or uh, uh, this week earlier on Monday that we're going to start a new YouTube schedule. So Mondays, we're going to try to drop anything striking or in it. So boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, Savat, Jeet Kune Do, those are all the things that we teach here at the Warriors Academy in Portland. Um, and then Wednesdays, we're always going to do a BJJ or Gracie Jiu Jitsu technique of the week. And then Friday, we're going to drop anything with weaponry. It could be firearms, Kali, again, everything that we teach at the Academy. Kali, Eskrima, Arnis. Awesome. And all that. So that way you guys can look forward to like when the videos are dropping and like what subject you're into. And uh, really soon we're going to come out with a complete online curriculum and we'll let you all know how to get into that. So there's what, gosh, 30, 30 plus hours worth of material? For each program. It's a lot. It's, of, there's a lot of material. Yeah. It's crazy, man. But uh, yeah, I don't know how much this audience wants to get into it. But I looked at um, our YouTube data. And we only have like a hundred plus videos out there now. Yeah. And it's like people watch videos two to three minutes. That's typical on YouTube. Yeah. But of the people that subscribe to our channel, the average viewing time is like a couple hours. Okay. And people come huh. back and they, they rewatch huh. it and they're trying to learn. So we really appreciate you guys. Thanks for liking and subscribing to the channel. We're the River City Warriors and we are Warriors out, out guys.